everyone, how's it going? Thanks so much for tuning in. For today's video, I'm proud to present an up close and personal in-depth look with the Penos Esperante Spider and Spider GT. In this review, we'll start them up, show the engines, go over the performance data, and get plenty of exhaust clips, take them both on a thorough drive, and show you many of the unique aspects throughout the interiors as well as exteriors. Before I begin, a huge thanks and shout out to Penos for providing this opportunity today. For more information about the company, including contact info and current offerings, check out their website found in the description box below. Also a special mention to the Chateau Alain Winery and Resort for allowing us to film at their beautiful facility. Their information can also be found below. So without further ado, let's go ahead and hop on in, start her up, let her run. Panels offers eight standard color options for the Esperante, unless you're looking for something a bit different. In that case, there's quite literally thousands of other options for true individualization. The interior is similar in that there's four standard colors, but again, Panels is more than ready to cater to unique requests, no matter how off the wall it might be. Keep in mind that both of the cars featured here are pre-production prototypes, so there's going to be some elements throughout that aren't a proper representative of the final product. To start, all you have to do is just make sure you have the key fob within the interior, then simply put your foot on the braking clutch and hit the dash mounted button to go. For those not familiar with Panos, they first opened their doors back in 1989 and were founded on the principle of producing hand-built exclusive sports cars that were decidedly American, and came without the costly service and repairs of more exotic alternatives. The two main ideals that have followed the company since day one is that each car must have a V8 and come standard with a manual transmission. Despite being a small car company, they've also been heavily involved in racing over the years including winning both the 12 Hours of Sebring and the 24 Hours of Le Mans in 2006 with the Esperante GTLM. Panos builds each car to order in a relatively small factory just north of Atlanta, Georgia. The Esperante has been the company's bread and butter since the early 2000s and is one of the best examples of a truly bespoke automobile. The Spider and Spider GT are being produced in very limited numbers to celebrate the company's 25th anniversary. With an expansive list of customization options, no two cars are ever alike. Literally everything from powertrains to body styles and even the seats are up for change, not to mention colors, materials, finishers, accents, and more. With regards to maintenance, Pandos has always used engines sourced from Ford and GM, even in the early days, with technology and equipment that's already been proven time and time again in higher volume production cars. This not only ensures a proper availability of replacement parts if needed, but you're also able to have a service just about anywhere. In 1992, when Panos launched the original Roadster, they became the first U.S. auto manufacturer to use superformed aluminum body panels on a production car. Later on in 1996, with the introduction of a new aluminum chassis and a new all-aluminum V8 engine, the Panos AIV Roadster became America's first aluminum-intensive vehicle. Now, especially with the new Spider and Spider GT, Panos offers the Esperante in either a standard or wide-body version. 
The standard body is primarily made from superformed aluminum panels, while the wide body, which is automatically added on the Spider GT, blends aluminum and carbon fiber. Even the headlamps feature carbon fiber housings. The wide stance allows for wider wheels and tires for greater traction with higher horsepower engine options. If you're familiar with Esperantes of the past, you're probably aware of this revised front fascia that was introduced a while back. The long sloping nose was added as a homologation requirement for the company's race cars. It proved to be more aerodynamically efficient than the original fascia and directed more air to the engine, with larger intakes for better performance and cooling. Of course, as bespoke as these cars are, if you really had a soft spot for the so-called classic fascia, you can still order your car with it as long as you specify the standard body. You can also mix body styles with the different powertrain options. Again, the options are pretty much limitless. Underneath the bodywork is a patented modular extruded aluminum chassis with tubular steel subframes and carbon fiber composite superstructures, some of which can be seen across the entry thresholds. The Spider and Spider GT are both open top vehicles by default, unlike the Esperante convertible which has a foldable soft top. In order to maintain a high level of stiffness and torsional rigidity, engineers upgraded the A-pillars with a high strength tubular steel structure compared to the traditional stand parts. The Spider's new carbon fiber windshield frame also sits 5.5 inches lower than any other Esperante. The windshield frame also makes use of unidirectional carbon fiber for added strength and stiffness. Additional tubular bracing can also be found in the rear subframe, including twin high-strength steel roll hoops that reside behind each seat. All of this put together gives the Spider a more low-slung look than your regular Esperante. The carbon fiber rear panel also houses twin capless fuel filler systems, so no matter what side you pull up to at the gas station, you're still able to fill it up. A removable tonneau cover is included to seal and protect the interior when not in use. Cars like this that are handmade in limited numbers certainly don't come cheap. With an MSRP of $165,900 for the Esperante convertible, or $183,900 if you opt for the wide body, there's a lot of different cars out there to choose from. If you're looking for something truly different with an immensely personal feel, the Esperante is definitely something you'll want to consider. The limited edition Spider is priced at $159,500, while the Spider GT is priced at $197,500. Panos offers quite a range of wheel styles for the Esperante, all of which can be found on their online configurator. The standard BBS forged aluminum wheels measure 19 by 8.5 inches in front and 19 by 9.5 inches at the rear. They're wrapped in 245-40 and 285-35 Michelin Pilot Supersport tires respectively. Like I mentioned earlier, by opting for the wide body configuration, standard on the Spider GT, Panos is able to fit an even wider set of wheels and tires for more grip around corners and greater traction under hard launches. I'd estimate road holding ability to be between 0.95 and 1G. Steering is provided by a hydraulically assisted rack and pinion setup that delivers great road feel and response with sharp handling. It takes just 2.6 turns to lock with an overall ratio of around 15 to 1. The turning circle is measured at 36.9 feet. Two-piece forged aluminum BBS RSGT wheels come standard on the Spider GT, although they're not shown here. Regardless, on the Spider GT, the wheels measure 19 by 10 inches in front, paired to 275-35 tires, and 19 by 12 inches in the rear with 325-30 tires. An ultra-lightweight BBS F1 wheel package is also available for reduced unsprung weight. Like the Esperante convertible, the Spider should be able to stop from 60 miles an hour at about 112 feet or less as the two share the same braking system. At each corner you'll find two pieces slotted and internally ventilated disc brakes. The 14 inch front discs are paired with four piston Brembo calipers, while the 13 inch rear discs use single piston calipers. Upgraded six piston front and four piston rear calipers come standard on the Spider GT for added bite to complement the more powerful engine. The larger calipers are also available as an option on other Esperantes. A recently updated suspension consists of fully independent tubular steel upper and lower control arms at each corner with coilover springs and double adjustable nitrogen charged shocks. 
A hollow front sway bar keeps things tight around corners, while revised bushings improve ride quality over earlier cars. The ride is stiff, but it's never punishing. The adjustable shocks allow for fine tuning for firmer or relaxed setups. If you'd rather save some money and go for a fixed damper setup, that's easily done. While Panos will certainly entertain special engine requests, their two main offerings include a naturally aspirated 5 liter V8 or a supercharged 6.2 liter V8. Perhaps my favorite thing here is the aluminum plaques that embellish the signatures of the folks who assembled the car. The Spider and Spider GT both come standard with a heavy duty close ratio Tremec T56 Magnum 6 speed manual transmission. Power is sent to the rear wheels through a limited slip differential and a 3.55 to 1 final drive ratio. The differential features an aluminum housing with heavy duty half shafts. For greater convenience, a 6 speed automatic with panel shifters is also available. I haven't driven the automatic yet, but the manual would be my knee jerk choice. It's a fantastic gearbox that combines smooth, crisp shifts with a nicely weighted clutch and a stunning aluminum shift lever. Both of the available engines feature aluminum block and heads, as well as sequential multiport fuel injection. The 5 liter V8 was sourced from Ford and is more or less the same Coyote engine you'll find underneath the hood of a new Mustang. It's also the engine used in Esperante Spider, slightly modified of course, and rated at 430 horsepower. With this engine, Panos claims a 0 to 60 time with just 3.7 seconds, a quarter mile time of 12.5 seconds at 112 miles per hour, and top speed of 172 miles per hour. On the flip side, the Spider GT's 6.2 liter V8 is GM's LSA engine that powers the previous generation Cadillac CTS-V and Chevrolet Camaro ZL1. It's an absolute monster, developing a whopping 560 horsepower. If I had to estimate, I'd say the GT can hit 60 in less than 3.5 seconds and hit a top speed closer to 180 miles per hour. As you all probably know, these engines have very different personalities and designs. This is especially evident when looking at how each sounds with the Penaus engineered exhaust system. The 5 liter V8 absolutely bellows with a much more prominent sound, whereas the 6.2 liter V8 actually sounds a bit more mellow until you get into the higher RPMs where it gets a lot more aggressive and raspy. Panos uses Magnaflow mufflers on their cars. With the Spider, the exhaust exits out back, but with the GT, you get side pipes like a Dodge Viper. So when you're accelerating really hard, you get that raspy, aggressive sound right at your ear. It's such a crazy sensation. As cool as all of that might sound, with the help of Elan Motorsports Technologies and decades of motorsports experience, Panos can custom build engines per request that produce over 800 horsepower. Now let's go ahead and get some sound comparison clips between the Spider and the Spider GT. We'll compare cold starts, rev shots, and some on-road driving footage. We'll go ahead and kick things off at the Spider GT and its supercharged 6.2 liter V8.
The interior of the Esperante has always been unique, especially during the early days. It featured a design that appeared to pay homage to the Penaz Roadster, but enveloped occupants in a more comfortable and premium environment. Today the Esperante has evolved quite a bit, incorporating some modern touches while keeping things simple and straightforward. Just about every surface within reach is wrapped in leather. For what it is, it's a comfortable interior with good ergonomics and only the bare necessities. If equipped, optional Alcantara accents can be had on the seats, dash, door panels, and center console. The red prototype you've seen has its gauge cluster, air vents, and lower dash highlighted in brushed billet aluminum, a nice modern touch that also highlights the car's aluminum intensive construction. In contrast, what isn't carbon fiber in the yellow car is finished in piano black trim. It's almost impossible to discuss everything in a video like this as there's so many things that can differ between cars, especially since the two cars here are prototypes. There are some things that differ here and there between them, and some of the edges are a bit rougher than you'd find in a full production ready car, but it gives you a great look into what's possible. Of course, with the additional carbon fiber trim pieces and even wood options, you can go as sporty or elegant as you want. Panos offers a number of seat styles based on your preferences and whether you're looking for something more comfortable or performance oriented, such as the carbon fiber backed Sabelt sports seats shown in the yellow example. They're manually adjusting to save weight, but I was told power adjustments are available if desired, probably based on the seat choice. In the regular Esperante convertible, regardless of the seat style, traditional safety belts with load limiters are standard. However, on the Spider and Spider GT, there's Schroth four-point racing harnesses with inertia reels and a competition lockout feature. The latter operates like a regular seatbelt for normal driving, but if you press a small button in the center console labeled Race Belt, it'll lock them in a fixed position and remove the slack. This keeps you secure and in place at all times, especially useful for track days. Behind the seats in the Spider and Spider GT is a carbon fiber panel where the convertible top would typically be located. It also conceals the roll hoops I mentioned earlier. All in all, the latest Esperante line offers more interior space than ever before. It appeared quite accommodating, especially for taller folks. Being 5 foot 10 inches, I felt like I had plenty of room to move around. The standard leather wrapped Momo steering wheel measures 13.75 inches in diameter, but a thicker 14 inch flat bottom carbon fiber steering wheel is available. The latter can be had with leather or Alcantara across the sides. Perhaps the most striking new addition to the latest Esperantes is the dashboard, which now incorporates a 10.6 inch digital instrument display instead of the prior center mounted instrument cluster. It kind of looks like an iPad and incorporates all of your necessary readouts such as speed, RPM, temperatures, fuel, and more. I was told that the production ready cars actually have a slightly different layout that's a bit easier to see going down the road as far as digital speed readouts are concerned. On top of that, you're able to toggle between day and night modes, which changes the background color from white to black respectively. Behind the shifter and the center console are the power window and door lock controls, easily accessible by the driver or passenger. The power mirror controls are located on the dash to the left of the steering wheel. With regards to interior space, the new Esperante line has more overall passenger space than prior iterations. Most of the car's cargo carrying ability can be found within the trunk. The interior has some space in the center console and the locking glove box. In the center console is an aftermarket infotainment system with navigation, satellite radio, and hands-free Bluetooth connectivity. 
The touchscreen itself measures 7 inches while a backup camera comes standard. As far as safety, the Esperante is designed to be inherently safe with its aluminum, high strength steel and carbon fiber chassis. There's also an airbag for the driver and the passenger. So next, let's go ahead and shut her down. Check out trunk space. The Esperante is a surprising amount of space out back. It's 8.8 .8 cubic feet worth, which is about the same as a new Camaro, but you have a lot wider of an opening. Inside, you can also see some of the housings for the custom audio system, as well as a decorative panels inlay that serves as the trunk's illumination at night. Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed the in-depth look at the Penos Esperante Spider and Spider GT. Be sure to stay tuned next time, there's always a lot more where that came from. Take care everyone.